Oh my gosh, I am so sick of this Spanish influenza. I've been in a hundred years that I have it all figured out. Yeah, sure, my 1920s American alter ego. Things are way better now. Anyway guys, all jokes aside, welcome to today's YouTube video. Today we are going to have an itty bitty look at the fashion and contextual history that shaped 1920s clothing. Itty bitty because, well, hemlines were on the rise. I really hope that you guys enjoy this video. My name is Connie and this video kicks off the start of my 1920s episodes which I'm going to be doing here on YouTube which will detail every week a particular designer, illustrator, painter, model, muse, basically whatever it takes my fancy and takes yours that is to do with the 1920s. If that sounds like something that would interest you please go down and hit subscribe and also let me know in the comments what are your kind of ideas of the 1920s? Do you think of like Baz Luhrmann's Great Gatsby? Do you like the new kind of streamlined silhouette or do you prefer the more curvaceous look of the 1910s? Speaking of Gatsby, if you wanted to follow my fashion and costume history related Instagram, the name is the real underscore west underscore egg, like Gatsby where he lived, the west egg, and that's on Instagram. All of that information will be linked in the description box. And with that, let's go on with the video. So something often really overlooked when looking at fashion and costume is looking at the contextual and historical facts that were available at the time. For example, I look at the period now that we're in, how will this be reflected in years to come, this time in quarantine, where loads of us are more wearing kind of like le leisure or athleisure wear, and the fact that shops have now catered to that demand. What will that say about this time period in years to come? With this in mind, when examining the 1920s fashions, we must remember that the World War One had only just ended in 1918, so two years before we hit 1920. And so throughout the war, many women had been drafted into the workforce, filling places that men had previously occupied whilst they're out fighting. So women had kind of gathered this kind of independent spirit, which had been building. So in the UK, we think of the suffragettes and the Pankhurst women, whilst in the US, we may think a little bit later of 1916 with the National women's party. So then by the time we hit 1920 in August of 1920, white women have secured the right to vote with the passage of the 19th Amendment. I say white women in particular because at this time, although technically women of colour and African American women could legally vote, it was made very difficult for them to do so up until 1965. So for example, I found actually just on Wikipedia, there was examples of African in a line outside their polling stations or they would have to read the American Constitution and then interpret it before they were allowed to vote. These things were kind of put in place to make it difficult for these women to vote, unfortunately. And so the women of the 1920s really distinguishes herself from the Victorian women of her mother's generation. And the way that is most obvious for her to do this is actually through clothing. So as you may know, the dresses of the 1920s kind of abandoned that more cinched in waist and voluptuous hips that had been the hourglass shape of previous decades. This was kind of turned over in favour of a more rectangular and boyish silhouette as popularised by Coco Chanel and Elsa Schiaparelli. In France, this new woman with her boyish figure and newly bobbed hair was crowned with the name La Garçon after the novel was written by Victor Marguerite of the same name. Although this book ended in a very traditional manner with the heroine becoming married and having children, the book was still very scandalous at the time. So to create this new rectangular shape, the undergarments that women wore had to be drastically changed. I like to think that perhaps the corsets with their really intricate boning and panelling techniques were all kind of tossed into an inferno. Um, I, I don't think that that's... Um, what happened. Women were in fact still a bit scared to go bare under there. So what women would usually have is kind of elasticated bandeaus or elasticated bundles with panels that would come down um, kind of to the top of the hips um, and these would be designed specially to squash down kind of the boob and the bum area to give you a more streamlined figure. 
which I find really strange because now today we have women kind of wearing these corsets and waist trainers to kind of force curves into their bodies to look maybe a little bit more like Kardashian-esque. However, just because women were suppressing their curves doesn't mean that they weren't injecting a little bit of va va voom in other ways. But for example, the hemlines, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, were actually rising towards their knee year by year. And this towards the late 1920s and into the 30s went down again. But that was one way that women kind of were trying to be a little bit more sexy perhaps. And also it was very common for women to have their decolletage and shoulders and even back very bare in the evening. If you were going to like an evening show or to a cabaret or something like that, that was really typical. The makeup industry also saw a massive boom at this time with women kind of having that smoky raccoonish eye makeup, having these little sloping down very dark eyebrows and drawing on a very perfect red cupid's bow. However, owing to this implication of the silhouette and the styles that were becoming popular in the 1920s, they saw a revival in home sewers. For example, women that perhaps previously could not afford to buy designer clothes would have a look at these simplified um, shapes and think, oh, I could make that, and then they did. So this, along with the fact that women had kind of got bored of dressing multiple times a day, meant that there was kind of a breakdown, in fact, of like class and social barriers shown by clothing. Quite funny to me, I think, is the example of Coco Chanel's little black dress, which actually ha found its roots in the 1920s. The story goes that Chanel saw um, her maid, her French maid at the time, French maids would wear a very plain black shift dress and then it would have kind of this white lace detail. And he looked at this maid and was like, hmm, it would make a really nice evening dress if only there wasn't all of these little white frills. So she took them off and she was like, this will be a great success. And of course it was. Other cultural influences of the 1920s was the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb by um, British archaeologist Howard Carter in 1922. This kind of built on an already very strong trend for being interested in the kind of Orient that designers such as Poiret had already established. Paul Poiret had actually been kind of ripping off the Orient sort of fashions for very many years at that point. He inspired, but also not inspired because he insisted that he wasn't, by the Ballet Russe. And he had also done a lot of research into Indian turbans at the V&A. And to kind of showcase all of this work that he did, he held a garden party where he showcased his costumes and his outfits that were inspired by the Orient. At this time there was the lampshade dress, which is very famous. and. Paul Poignantly, there was more of kind of like an Orient inspired fetishization of the female body. Edward Said would be quaking. So kind of having this influence from the ancient Egyptians wasn't kind of anything new in terms of American, French and British designers being inspired from the East or the Orient. Um, it was just kind of like adding on to that already. And so a lot of ancient Egyptian sort of um, symbols and designs featured very heavily on bags, on dresses, on shawls, kind of just as a little embroidery motif or something like kind of spangled and glittering. Right guys, so that is actually the end of this video. This is the end of my introduction to 1920s contextual information. If you liked this video, please hit subscribe and please like it. Also remember to leave me a comment about what you think about 1920s fashion and the silhouette in general. I'd really be interested to know. I really love it sometimes, but more of like kind of the everyday wear I'm a bit like, oh. But let me know what you think and please subscribe so that you can see the rest of this kind of series that I'm going to be doing. I think next I'm going to be looking at the sister duo, the designers Buis Sur, the French sisters who design absolutely beautifully embellished and um, kind of floral inspired 1920s outfits. So stay tuned if you want to see that. It's been really fun talking to you today and um, I'll see you next time.